Hi folks, it's Harris. It's late on Thursday. Sorry. Uh, this is getting up late. Um, it's been a busy day. <laughs> um, and I'll talk more about that once I start talking about uh, the video. But I just wanted to apologize first because it's late and uh, I just didn't have time to record this until now. So here we go. Uh, this week's topic is bullying. Um, and it's and it's an odd sort of topic uh, for me, uh, since, and we'll maybe talk more about this on another week, um, but since I'm not completely out uh, with everybody that I know, I'm really only uh, openly uh, queer with probably about, well, all my college friends really, um, and only one family member. Um, it's tricky for me. To, um, to feel like I'm an authority on bullying be simply because um, since I'm not completely out I haven't really um, had as many or been in as many oops, sorry I'm trying to make this work better been in as many situations where I could be bullied uh, simply because people don't know uh, that I'm super queer um, so so I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about my day, um, and you'll see how this all connects. Uh, I work with an elementary school class, um, two English-speaking um, uh, Minnesotan uh, first grade classrooms, um, and uh, I, I tutor the kids who are struggling with reading and falling behind with reading due to behavioral issues, uh, social disorders, language barriers, um, learning disabilities etc. Um, and and with that, uh, the 15 kids that I tutor on a daily basis aren't the only kids that I interact with. Um, I interact with all 86 of the first graders, uh, the non-English speaking classroom as well. And um, I see a lot of bullying. Even as six and seven year olds, I see a lot of bullying. I see kids using, tossing the word gay around. I see kids tossing the word rape around. Um, I see uh, one of my Spectrum kids. Um, spectrum is the term we use for kids anywhere on the scale of um, from Asperger's to autism. Um, that's the term the school district uses. Um, see my Spectrum kids getting teased all the time. I see my uh, so it's it's uh, even though I don't have as much personal experience with bullying, I see it a lot. Um, I have one girl who I taught uh, in an after-school class, uh, a sixth grader, who uh, uh, she's female-bodied. Uh, she uses female pronouns, but she dresses as a boy. And if ever given the option of choosing a group of girls to go with or a group of boys to go with, she will always choose the boys. Uh, gets in line with the boys. Uh, even as like a kindergartner and first grader would use the boys' bathroom, um, and so I, I don't know if she's trans or if she's gender queer or gender fluid or any of those sorts of things. But she definitely does a lot of the same things now that I was doing at that age, and um, she gets bullied a lot. Um, I made a point of always, you know, uh, wearing my bracelet out and around her, talking about how the classroom that I teach is a safe place, all those sorts of things. Um, and kids will pick on her, uh, telling her to put on a dress and act like a normal girl and all those sorts of things. And she's got a pretty tough exterior, because uh, she's been, like I said, been doing um, her thing since kindergarten. You know, the teachers at the school are used to it, but the kids still see it as something abnormal and different and will um, antagonize her and it's very difficult to watch um, although I'm out with um, all of my coworkers, uh, it's not a situation where I can sit down with uh, this student and say guess what I'm queer let's talk about it um, because that's not my job and uh, I, I would never want to put a student in an uncomfortable situation like that and, uh, and plus I know that some of the powers that be at my school would 
get very frustrated with me about that. Um, which leads me to the experience that I can share with you all about um, bullying as best as I can explain it um, in my recent weeks and months. Um, I am out with most of my coworkers. Anyone who asks, I'll tell them. I don't just like walk into the principal's office and be like, hey, I'm pan and genderqueer. Um, and my principal and my boss both have given me difficult times. Uh, my boss gives me a hard time sometimes about the extra volunteer hours that I choose to do since I'm an, uh, a volunteer at the school. I also have to fulfill a certain number of extracurricular volunteer hours and a lot of the things that I do are with organizations like Outfront, uh, which I've mentioned before, um, or uh, the gay, um, anti-gay um, marriage amendment um, that the Minnesota legislature has been trying to push through. You've seen my, my videos and I've talked about that. Um, that's what I spend my time doing and my supervisor sort of gets frustrated when she looks at my timesheet and 75% of the things on there are having to do with queer stuff. And she she mentioned it in a real round of it's it's never like oh you stupid fag or anything like that like she get fired for that, um, but uh, do you know uh, Sarah is this really the sort of thing that you should be spending your time with? Uh, I just think uh, maybe it'd be better if you spent uh, your time doing uh, some other activities. Um, maybe try and uh, put some more variety in in the work that you're doing. Uh, yeah, why don't you th uh, think about that? And I've gotten that kind of stuff a lot from her, and it's aggravating to say the least. <clears throat> um, my principal has, uh, you know I have short hair. I love my short hair. I adore it. Um, oh, to go back just a second, my birth name is Sarah. I go by Harris with the people who I can go by Harris with. Um, I decided about three weeks, four weeks ago that every job that I apply for from now on, I'm going to request that I be addressed as Harris. Uh, I did not do that with my uh, current position, and it would have just have been awkward to switch names halfway through the year, so I continue to go by Sarah in that position. Um, anyway, short hair principle. I wear my hair in a faux hawk when it's long enough. My stupid barber cut way too much off. Um, but I wear my hair in a full hawk as often as I can, um, because I like it. Um, I dress pretty androgynously at times. I never wear a real bra to work. They're just too damned uncomfortable, and I don't like my breasts most of the time, so... Um, so I wear a sports bra. I wear appropriate, uh, fitting pants and shirts. Uh, a lot of times they're a little bit baggy. Um, just because that's the style I like. Men's dress shirts fit me quite well. I have broad shoulders. I love them. Um, and in the beginning of the year, a lot of the kids had a hard time knowing whether I was Mr. A or Miss A. Um, what they should call me. And, um, and I sort of just let them decide what they wanted to call me. And I still have some kids who call me Mr. A, which is totally cool with me. Um, but the frustrating thing is, is that... Uh, when I wear my hair in a faux hawk, when I could be perceived as a man, and when I am intentionally performing uh, as a man, um, my principal will, you know, do you, do you think you could wear uh, something a little bit more appropriate to your, uh, well, you know, is faux hawk really the sort, is a mohawk really the sort of thing that you should, uh, well, you know, you just want to uh, set a good example for the kids, don't you? My response to that is, oh, I'm sorry, I guess you don't see on a regular basis the two men who basically every single day wear their hair in a faux hawk, a teaching assistant and a full-time instructor. Uh, if it's acceptable for them to do that, why should it be any problem for me? And then I sort of just get a frowny face. You know that teachers look when they really can't say anything more, but they want to and you know that they want to and they know that you know that they want to? That's happened a few times. And it makes me feel like shit. Because a school is supposed to be a safe place for anyone. It's supposed to be a place where kids don't just learn what's in books or, you know, whatever is um, put in front of them for homework or assignments. But it's supposed to be a place that, that kids can learn how to express themselves and can learn more about who they are. 
And if their instructors are being stifled or uh, told that, that they shouldn't uh, be who they are, how are the kids supposed to have genuine, accurate, uh, authentic role models? Um, so I politely tell people, this is who I am. Um, I'm not vulgar about it. I don't wear a big old shirt saying, I fuck girls. <laughs> you know, nothing like that ever. I, I'm very, very cautious about how much I ever talk to coworkers, uh, who I am not fully, uh, like, and that I don't have a personal friendship with. If it's a strictly professional relationship, then I don't come out uh, until I have sort of a, a personal relationship with them. Um, so it's not like I'm, I'm going around telling everybody. I, I wear my bracelet every single day. I don't, you know, make a big deal about it, but it's there, and people notice it. Um, people ask about it, and some people don't. Um, and I feel like I feel like if people were, uh, if the people that I work with have a problem with the way I dress or the way that I act, then they don't speak up about it, unless it's of course the two people that I've mentioned, both of whom are female, uh, which frustrates me even more because one's an administrator and the other's a supervisor, and in a society that still is uh, very sexist and that where women um, still do not have um, the same access to opportunities and jobs and pay as men, you would think that um, these individuals would want to uh, promote and accept and, you know, generally be respectful to the other women who are in uh, equal or lower positions to them. Uh, but that doesn't always turn out to be the case. So, anyway, that's my stint for this week. Sorry it's so late. Uh, it's not exactly about bullying, but it's an experience that um, I hope that some of you, uh, if you relate to this, I hope that some of you uh, don't feel quite so alone with it. Um, bullying doesn't always have to be violent words or violent actions. Bullying can be very subtle, can be very much about glances and, and looks and assumptions and well, what the fuck is she doing doing that again, you know? Um, anyway. I'm very frustrated tonight, and I'm very tired. I went to a funeral this afternoon uh, for a dear friend of mine who was killed recently in the um, northern Minneapolis tornado, and I'm just, I'm exhausted, so if this wasn't very poetic, oops, I'll try again better next week. Um, I love you all, and I hope that you are all having a, a good evening, and um, I hope to hear from some of you. Feedback, comments, questions, snide remarks, sarcasm, uh, love letters, whatever. Um, so, you're all perfect and beautiful, and I love you. Good night.